Um, we are on the, heading to the last part, which is uh, inviting Mr. Baba Kunta Fofana um, to tell, uh, tell us about uh, the environmental dimension of antimicrobial resistance in the country. Fofana, you have. Uh, good afternoon once again. I, I hope you can hear me. Loud and clear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Koma. Thank you so very much. My regards to Adama. Um, Adama, how are you? We haven't very seen good. for some time. Yeah. You know, I've, I've been seeing that other address. Yeah. So thank you so very much for for this. All the organizers from, from the get-go to now, it's not been easy. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't get connected so that I was going to introduce to you who I am, but I think I'm known. So there might not be any, I mean, any need to say why I am. And also Binta had my brief, brief CV, must have talked about me and that's it. So what a very interesting interaction. This is a very interesting interaction and there is a great need for us, you know, to come together and then uh, fight this thing together because this is not one man. So it is something that we collectively have to do it um, from all aspects. Uh, Dr. Dr. Baji said it, Dr. Sisa mentioned something about the importance of, you know, the environment, the biodiversity and, and things of that. All those things coming together, to be quite honest, if it is not looked at properly, we will just be, you know, battling with the infectious diseases. So, yes, the, the non-infectious diseases are here, the um, NCDs, non-communicable diseases. but. Um, there was this day I was going through a particular um, literature. Uh, they said in 1968, there about the Surgeon General of U.S. said, you know, well, they, they believed that the infectious disease, fight for infectious disease was over. But it's a different thing altogether. So antimicrobials are issues. And sometimes we get these things from the, when the biodiversity is not taken care of, when the environment is not taken care of. So you'll agree with me that um, antimicrobials, you know, in the olden days or even a few years ago, the fight was mainly concerned with around the health and that of the animals. But the environment was not looked at as such. And you really cannot succeed in fighting diseases, disease-related things without involving the environment. So that's why when I was approached, when we had the discussion, whether we can say something about antimicrobials, whether we can say something about diseases and things related to the environment, I was actually very pleased, you know, to, to talk about that. So by way of introduction, I'll start talking about what, what are these antimicrobials we are talking about? What are they? What relationship do they have with the environment? That is our concern, or that should concern you and I. So obviously, typically, we said antimicrobials um, are agents or substances that are supposed to do two main things, one or two, all right? That is to kill the microbes, the disease-causing organism, kill them, or stop their growth. So when we say antimicrobials, this is, you know, comb combination of antibacterial, antifungal, antiparasitic, anti, you know, helmetic, you name them. All right, so those are antimicrobials. So what and what relationship do they have with the environment? Now that we are talking about climate change, we are talking about problems with the biodiversity, problems with our surroundings, our animals and things. So what is what are we talking about? Now, um, what are they? We, I, I just mentioned that you know um, they are actually supposed to be agents that will stop the growth or will kill but they are widely used in animals and humans. Because they are widely used in animals and humans, there is actually a great need for people like us to come together in the Gambia and beyond. That is people from the environment, people from the biodiversity, people from the fisheries, people from animal, we should come together. And then that is the reason why when you look at a, what we call a glass, this is a particular thing that is looking at, you know, what they say, um, one health, one health approach. All right, because microbes are developing resistance. I kept, I'm kept saying this thing. We are at war with them. We are at war with microbes. We come this way, come with this anti particular antimicrobial or this antibiotic. You realize that they come up with another mechanism that will enable them to develop resistance. So they come out evolutionary. And that evolutionary change is usually as a result of their DNA being changed. 
So what are we going to do as, as researchers? Uh, what are you going to do as scientists to make sure we inhibit these organisms, we kill them, they are destroyed, they are not good. Because if we are not healthy, if the environment is not healthy, environment is not conducive, obviously there will be a problem. We see it as we are moving you know, along. So, but this antimicrobial resistance we are talking about can be something which is intrinsic. It can be something you are born with. I mean, it's kind, kind of natural. The antibiotic become, the organism become resistant naturally. But it could also be something that is acquired, all right? It's been acquired from the environment. There was something, I mean, a particular microorganism died in that environment, and then there is a nearby microorganism will, you know, get the DNA from this um, organism that died, which was resistant, which had a resistant gene. So the organism, this organism will actually acquire it from this dead organism and it also develop resistance. Next slide, please. Binta, next slide, if you are there. Right, so you look at this figo. Quite interesting. You can see, you all agree with me that there is a, there is a great I mean, uh, need for us to come together. Because this figure over here is showing how antimicrobial resistance can spread. All right? How it's transmitted. How is it spread from one individual to the other? So, I mean, I, I mean I'm giving the credit to where this thing was obtained from, from the government of Australia 2017. Now, when you look at it, look at the animals. Go into the animal husbandry, for example. Go into the animal science. You know, people deal with animals. Yeah, but even with those, I mean, in, in, in animal environment, they deal with antibiotics. They have some some of these drugs that they give them, they could call them, in, I mean, fatness. They get them so that they will get fat within a given time. And a good number of times, most of the time, usually antibiotics can be, can be abused. So these antimicrobials are also used in food production. All right? Animals will consume from that, and they develop this. I mean, uh, resistant genes. We consume from those. I mean, animals. Or those, Hello, I mean, uh, Baba. Uh, sorry, yes. uh, sorry to interject. If you can, because it's like we behind time a bit. If you can okay. just, uh, yeah. So please. Good. Okay, thank you, Koma. That's right. So, um, in a nutshell, the figure is just trying to tell us how antimicrobials are transmitted from animals from the environment to us, from us to the environment and then vice versa. So therefore the environment, you know, plays, it has a great dimension on antimicrobial resistance. Next slide. Now look at this figure. You realize that this particular figure, uh, there are only two things I'm just going to, I mean, one thing I'll talk about is, or maybe two things. Currently, as I speak to you, there is about 1.27 million deaths. All right? For, I mean, as a result of antimicrobial resistance and then the bacteria that have resistant genes. 1.27 million deaths globally. And then the, the estimate is telling us that come 2050, come 2050, if we do not come together, environmentalists, those who are in the fisheries, those who are in the agriculture, those who are in the animal husbandry, the animal health, if we do not come together by 2050, about 10 million deaths per year. You know, that's a huge number. That's a huge number. So this, that's the reason why we need to come together, you know, concerted efforts. We need to collaborate. We need to make sure we play our role. Like Dr. Baji said in his presentation, it is not a one-man show. We all should come together. Those are the two important points I just want to highlight. The current incident or current cases of AMR and that of by 2050, how, what are we expecting? Next slide. The effectiveness of antimicrobials. I had a doctor uh, Caesar saying, he said made mention of something, you know, that is in jeopardy. I also want to use, I mean, borrow that word from my jeopardy. Um, the effectiveness of this antimicrobial is at stake. It's at stake. It's actually in jeopardy. Because if you look at the, you know, in the early 90s or mid 90s, thereabout, when Sir Alexander Fleming and others talked about antibiotics, discovered this antibiotic, let's say the penicillin, for example. Everybody was, I mean, excited. The scientists were excited. The clinicians were happy that, look, we are going to take care of these problems. Our patients will be fine. And all of a sudden, it was, as I said, microbes are evolving and they are coming up with resistant genes that is causing a lot of havoc. To us. Antimicrobial compounds, well, they are in the environment. How do they get into the environment? You go to the, our hospitals. You know, you realize that our sink, and even in the wards, 
good number and sometimes we wash our hands somebody will use some of these antimicrobial agents or some of these drugs you wash your hands in the sink so they go there you have those i mean antimicrobial agents and they go down to the sink and if the, for example that water that is coming out the worst water coming out from the hospital is not treated it finds its way into a place where you know at the end of the day it's going to be an environment that comes comes back to us so therefore we are in trouble if we do not do anything because it's actually going to select i mean cause a selection you know, I mean, pressure. Next slide. How does it develop and how does it spread? All right. This one, I think, let me just go to the next, I mean, move to the next slide and I'll explain that as, as a diagram, then we can probably move on. And no, I think there's a diagram which sum of everything. I'm not too sure of my presentation that there should be a diagram. Okay. This is very one I actually, I think this is what I want to talk about. No, no, go back. Please go back. Sorry about that. I think, I think I just, was it go back to the, the, the slide I said next? I move again. Next, please. Next. Okay. Microbes can develop AMR in various ways. For, ex for instance, from, for bacteria. You see some bacteria that are in water, bacteria that are found in the soil. You have those that are actually in the air. They develop resistance, you know, once they come in contact with any other agent or any other compound. Because sometimes there are some of these stressors that are in the environment, they are, I mean, emitted in the atmosphere, in the environment, when the microorganisms, the micro, I mean, come in contact with them, they can develop resistance. So bacteria is not an exception. They can do that. All right? AMR it can also be vertically and horizontally transferred. It can actually be moved. It can be transmitted through vertical transmission or through horizontal transmission. Again, this will result to selective pressure from these agents. All right, you realize certain disinfectants. Look at the 2019 um, pandemic, coronavirus. In the Gambia here, for example, a lot of people who don't know, even know what disinfectants are, you know, they want to actually come up with uh, developing some hand sanitizers. <laughs> you can imagine, all right? Because, okay, I will agree that the COVID-19 was a way call to all of us. But some of those agents, you cannot even tell, those disinfectants that they are producing, Prepared, you cannot even tell. You'll agree with me, some of you who have been around, that some of those things, even you, you see, is even peeling off your, 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 your hands. So when those things happen to come in contact with some of these microbes, the chance of them developing antimicrobial So therefore, the environment plays a pivotal role. And people in the environment, people in the animal, animal health, and people in human health should come together, you know, to work together. Next slide. Time is not there. I don't think we do. You know, there are other... I mean, sections, other things that actually AMR can be spread into the environment, all right? Release of, bi I mean, uh, biological AMR pollutants that can originate from, like I said, these discharges from the water, I mean, the, the untreated water, waste water, that's called. And one of my um, interest area is to look at the sinks and some waste water that is generated from the hospitals. I want to look at some organisms like pseudomonas, and some of those related organisms, and then I, I kind of looked at their, the genes that they have that is conferring resistance to them. Because I realize it's a problem in our settings. It's a big problem in our settings. So these waste waters that are coming from the hospitals, that have been coming and then they are ejected into the atmosphere, into the environment like that, that are not being treated, I want to collect from them and probably go further to do some sequencing on those samples, those isolates that I have, you know, do some work on them and do some sequencing so that I, I, I can actually can get some of these genes. That is one of the interests, I mean, interest areas that I want to do, you know, for my for my research. Okay, this, I mean, next, next slide. Please, next slide. Right. Which pollutants that make AMR in the environment and where do they come from? There are five major Five major pollutants. All right. There are five major. Remaining. Okay. Five major ones. Poor sanitation. You all agree with me how, how sanitation is like? Well, these days it's a bit okay. You know, I remember in the olden days, if you go to some communities, you see how, I mean, the, the, the pet, pet, pet latrines are like, it's just something else. Phytosanitary, there is a real need for phytosanitary. All right. The poor sanitation. The sewage, how our sewage being been disposed of, where are they disposing them of? So they actually, some of those, I mean, waste or sewage things that are going into that, those environments that are not well treated, they have some of these antimicrobial agents. They go to the environment, I mean, they get more resistant now, the genes, and then it comes back to us. So some of the, the waste that are coming out, the discharges that are coming out from the pharmaceutical engineering, I mean, manufacturing companies, 
we may not say in our own Gambia we have these, those manufacturing companies, but in our hospitals, there are discharges, there are wastewater that are coming from our hospitals, coming to the environment and play effective role. I mean, good role in actually this. And even the facilities, not just the hospital, but other health facilities. And then use of antimicrobials. How many of our people are using, you know, manufacture, I mean, manure in pro crop production? And the microbials um, in crop production. I'm, I'm receiving signals. Animal production. I'm receiving signals that we are way behind time. Okay. So I think we can, maybe we can just stop there. Yeah, is there any question? Then I think maybe because we started the boy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not uh, I'm not fair to you, Baba. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, let me open the floor and hear from uh, uh, the listeners out there. If uh, anybody has a question, maybe we can, he, can, he or she can ask. And um, the panelists will have time to answer the questions before we we'll, uh, invite Dr. Farmer Adamfa, who is... Uh, be kept waiting to give us a closing remark. Uh, questions are coming out from Gambians abroad obey laws because there are consequences for breaking the law. This is from Boba Karba. Um, I saw a question from um, Farmer Drami. Waste management is collecting re responsibility, but also lack of waste management strategy in Gambia is con con contributing towards waste problem. So this is a, a general comment. So if anybody has something to add to that, also I, I think that one is uh, maybe Dr. Baji can say something about that. Climate change induced sea level rise is threatening biodiversity hotspots like Bijol Island in Drufut, a habitat for over 6,000 pairs of Caspians and the Royal Tams. This also is very good question. Um, I think this one, um, Adam, you have something to say about that. Okay, let's hear from Dr. Baji. Abroad, or we follow rule because there are kind of uh, punishment, and and that is right. I think uh, what is key here yeah. is how we can really well, implement yeah. our, our, our uh, well, how we can actually implement our 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 laws is very very key, and that will help us a lot in trying to address some of the issues related to environmental pollution there are laws but what is key here is how we can but as we know most of the people who are there are the one who are also the, the the polluters so in a sense because of our this muscular syndrome which could not be served as an excuse if if somebody does something almost the entire community will all be calling you don't you know that that is your your wife is um, 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 related to this one? Or don't you know that you are classmate when you are in Newstart or where, wherever you may think about? So in a sense, these are some of the notions that we have, but we have to look at it from a very, that the problem that is a, that the individual is creating is actually going to affect us. And that's what you think from that perspective. Then we will not look at how close am I with this individual. The other aspect, hmm. yeah. The other aspect about the waste management aspect, you know, the issue of waste is, is a very diverse situation. Waste management is a diverse. We have almost six elements related to waste management, which include infrastructure, include resources, it includes a lot of things. There are actually waste management strategy since 1997. And currently, looking at it has, looking at the dynamism of waste the complexities of waste at the moment, at least the agency and other stakeholders are scientific to come right now, a consultancy have been given somebody to look into how we can really um, um, improve what we had from 1997 to date, looking at the complexity of waste. So documents are there, but as I said earlier on, we have very good documents when it comes to natural resources management. Thank what you. is key implementation? And intimidation yes. is 
actually there are a lot of aspects that need to be looked at, which include the resources. This is a very expensive venture and no individual or institution can do it. And it starts from the generator, the one who generates waste from your household. So if you start minimizing from there, then directly what also go to the waste stream will be limited. So these are some Thank of the things that we have to encourage at our household level. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think that there was a, a comment received from Mr. Dramit that uh, um, Bijol Island, because he used that as an example, is seriously under threat and that this is um, quite uh, the truth. And that uh, island is basically used as a nesting and a brooding grounds for uh, migratory species. And uh, he also highlighted uh, red columbus uh, monkeys and uh, others that are also on the threat at uh, um, what we call monkey park. Do you have anything to um, add to that? Um, definitely. Just to thank Farmer, he's an old guard. We've been along, doing this alongside each other for over a decade now. Uh, thank you for continuing to show your love for biodiversity and all that is nature. The issue of Visual Island is of uh, great concern because not only for the water birds present and the monkeys, but there are also other nature that have been discovered like the sea grasses. So I think it is going to come up in the next, not only national uh, conservation plants, but sub-regional ones. Thank you. And that reminds me, whatever we are uh, discussing here, I have a lecture tomorrow at a university, and this is what I'm going to talk about, coastal ecosystems and the services they are providing, including the threats we are facing. So basically, this is uh, what we are talking about. And there's a question from uh, Mr. Siddiq Barrow, and this is directly to uh, Jajusi. He wants to know the reason why Gambia is not having a land policy an urban policy and how quick can we um how quick can we uh, the trajectory can be done thank you um thank you Sidik. um i think um that is a very important question um, um the lack of land policy in the gambia um, i think that is the responsibility of it because we have an entire ministry responsible for land issues and there is a department also, Department of Land. Uh, and in the development process of the current NDP, um, it's still not final. And this was one of the issues uh, I raised personally in that uh, during the development process of the current NDP, because I took part in um, one of the, uh, the, the components um, population migration and um, um, settlement. And First, the government has to, have to prioritize it in the, in the development plan. If the government prioritizes it, and then, then it, uh, this will follow by um, the uh, development pro process of the policy. But um, us as citizens too, like the civil society organizations, the research institutions, like the, this, um, um, this in, um, particular institution, the universities, we all have a role to play. Um, sometimes we don't have to wait for the government to um, to take certain actions, we can come up, you know, we can come with proposals to, the, so to a particular department, show them that, hey, you know, this is a problem. They, are you aware of this? And so you put them through. Sometimes um, we have um, capacity gap in a lot of our institutions. So as a result, we need um, research institutions like this, the University of the Gambia, to come forward and approach certain, certain institutions, show them. Thank you. Uh, some of the problems that the government, uh, the, the country is facing, that will really help. Like, for example, the development partners, like EU, for example, or the UN, if they are interested in something, they approach the government and tell them that this is the situation that is available. They show you the evidence. So we can, as we as citizens, we can all play our role at our, you know, our, our you know, individual um, setting. So I think we can, we, if we do that, for, for the own policy, let me add that, um, like I mentioned in the presentation, there is no, I don't think there is a structure or an institution with a mandate to coordinate urban development programs. I don't think this is available in the Gambia. So we don't have any urban, uh, urban policy. Like migration too. There was no migration policy. Our office once pushed forward on this particular issue. 
and there has not been um, any migration survey conducted in the country. Data on migration was too scanty. So we have we have to push certain things at um, at our civil society level to ensure that the government also acts. So maybe that would help. Uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, what I have to. Uh, Thank you very about. much. And about the waste, I want you to add something about the waste management. Uh, very brief, please. Yeah, um, this is a big problem, and we are seeing the trend of urbanization in the Gambia. It is increasing at a very fast rate. And Kanifi municipality um, is a good example. You have the backwater dump site. Sometimes um, when people throw the waste at the, at the dump site, it has a lot of em em environmental implications. The councils have a very critical role to play in those things. So they need the required training to understand about waste, waste management. If you go to some countries like Sweden, for example, 99% of the waste doesn't go to the landfill. Some goes to the um, goes to recycling, some goes to um, energy generation. So we can adopt um, things like this. The councils have to partner with starting, uh, you know, with recycling, you know, um, in, uh, how to call it, businesses. Because at one thing, um, this um, entrepreneur, I think, a recycling in a organization, um, recycling the car, car tires, making you know, chairs out of car, car tires. So these such, such businesses need to be empowered to ensure that that's our business is, um, yeah, you know, is managed. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah, what I wanted yeah, to ask. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, the last comment was a uh, loss must be enforced. And this is very true. We have to enforce the regulations. Otherwise, it will be meaningless to develop those. And thank you from, uh, and from uh, Babu Karba. Thank you very much. Um, we're getting to the to the to the last point. Um, I know, of course, we will not be able to answer all your questions. They are forthcoming. Um, we apologize for that because we're running against time. Um, um, yes. Can I just add on something? On so oh. just briefly. Yeah. Um, with respect to institution that are mandated to address issue of um, uh, urbanization. Actually, you have Department of Physical Planning. Basically, they have to, they, it is part of their mandate to ensure that our, our urban, uh, well, everywhere in the country is planned. So that at least there's a, a, a line of action where whatever you want to build is supposed to be in that line. So that at least you have almost all these green paths or whatever. So that is why, and they also have what we call the land. So actually, the structures are there. As I mentioned earlier, most of the time is how we really don't follow those um, structures. But something that is coming up now, currently, is the development of this uh, national um, uh, land policy. That is what is coming up as of now. We even have sometimes it's not easy. We at the agency level, we have from some funding to develop that policy. But we have to direct it through an institution that is responsible for that, particularly the Ministry of Land. We have communicated to them to say that there are funding to carry out this, but up to now we did not get. And we cannot do it because if you do it as an institution, they will say, oh, but this is, this is the institution that is responsible. At the end of the day, the implementation of that thing will come. But we hope over time, those aspects um, uh, will be addressed. But sometimes it's the, it's the inactiveness of our own system that tend to degrade our... So so in a sense, we cannot wait until we get resources to make sure that we do what's supposed to be done. As We can start from small and grow with it as a country. But Thank if you want to wait until we get... Whatever, but the resources is never... If, 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 then some of the billionaires will have stopped looking for money. So we have to act as we go along with what is required of us. And I know every year, even you do one road or one good thing, by 10 years, you have done 10. If it is one, before it is 10 years, it's 10. So that has that will change. But if you want to wait, then we'll just be where we are waiting for the rest of our life. And our children will inherit us in that aspect. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Uh, it's a collective responsibility. So everybody has to be on board in order to have a solution um, facing us in the country because our environment Come is on. Yes. Finally, um, we want to invite um, Dr. Farmara down. Before, before, before Dr. Farmara comes. 
Oh, the Kunta. Is that Baba? Yes. 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 Uh, you you were going on and off. So I was asking uh, briefly two questions, so I needed answer for that. But um, did you get my question? Okay, at least let me answer one, because I had one. I had one. Let me just quickly answer that. I will not even go into details. Maybe just answer. Because you were asking about, I was noting it, I think how does the AMR get transmitted or, you know, move from front? Is that, is that, that was a concept question, right? Develop and spread in the environment, yeah. Yes. So like I mentioned, if you look at the presentations, I mentioned four aspects. That is the post sanitation. And then you also have the, you know, waste that is coming from the, um, from the critical en environments that are producing um, these uh, drugs and stuff. But also the, the waste that are coming from the healthcare facilities, like in my own facility hospitals, waste that are coming out from them. And then the use of these antimicrobials in the food and animal productions. So we can go into detail because time is not there. These are the four major aspects that we know, you know, uh, my, uh, antimicrobial is being spread. And that's how it develops. How it develops, you can go into details for that. But I just want to comment something. I think in the, in the subsequent presentations so, or, you know, some of these things, let's try, even if it's going to be two presenters, so that we have enough time to, because some of these things are very interesting and very broad. So that, that's, that's, that's my, my comment. Thank you. Yeah, time, is, time is, is, is of essence. So it's important. So on that regard, um, let me take this opportunity to thank all of you for finding time from your busy schedule to at least come and talk to us about um, the Gambia's changing environment and what can we do about it. So on that note, uh, a big cheers to all of you. And uh, to wrap it all, I invite Dr. Farmara Danfa to give us a closing remark. Uh, you've been waiting for quite a while now. Back to you. Thank you, everyone, once again, um, for, your, for your time and um, your wonderful presentations. And I think the theme for this webinar, the Gambia's changing environment, its challenges and um, opportunities are really, really important, very, very important in our society. Not only the Gambia as a whole, but also the, the, the world at large. We've been experiencing lots of high temperatures, flooding, you know, bush fires, uh, lots of, uh, let's say, uh, lots of urbanization uh, going on around. Of course, the Gambia is an exception. And I think it is high time for us to work together as a team in order to build a robust um, release resilient system in order to mitigate the impact, not only on, on us, but also the environment uh, uh, in general. So on that note, on behalf of uh, Gambia Center for Research and Policy Studies, I would like to thank the presenters um, for their outstanding presentations. Their deliberations were really, really insightful and we, we were able to also clear doubts and we were able to get more understandings about the issues that they've, they've, they've really dealt with. So on that note, I would like to thank the viewers as well, the audience to the webinar. And finally, we'd like to thank our, our moderator, that is uh, Mr. Lamit Koma, um, for coordinating the entire um, event. Thank you so much. And also a very big thank to our technical support staff for coordinating the entire event and by guiding us through, uh, giving us the, uh, the te technical support and guidance um, throughout the, the, the webinar. So on that note, I thank you all and I declare this webinar closed. Have a nice evening and happy weekend, everyone. Thank you. Thank you and bye. And bye-bye. <laughs>